On this episode of China Uncensored, the trial of Bo Lai. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Okay, this is someone I've wanted to talk about on this show for a long time. He's actually the reason I started this show. I've just never really had an opportunity until now. Bo Lai. He was the party secretary of China's southwestern megacity Chongqing and was in line to become a top contender in the Communist Party leadership until last year when he and everyone close to him were brought down in a highly public scandal. He's just been charged with corruption, bribery and abuse of power after disappearing from the public eye for over a year. But what I want you to keep in mind as this trial moves forward is that almost everything you hear about him will only be the story the party wants you to hear. But there's actually much, much more to it. Before Bo disappeared and his wife was sentenced to a suspended death sentence for murdering a British businessman, before he was the party secretary of Chongqing, even before he was China's commerce minister, he was in charge of Liaoning province. And a lot of really scary stuff happened there when he was in charge of it. Bo was ambitious. He was the mayor of Dalian City, a major city in Liaoning, from 92 to 2000 when he became the acting governor of the province until 2004. So what was the best way to move up the ranks back then? Get close to then Chinese leader Jiang Zemin, and his message at the time was clear. Crush the tens of millions of Chinese people practicing Falun Gong. Bo greatly expanded the province's labor camp system, basically places where you can shut people away without trial. The lucky ones become slave labor. The unlucky ones are tortured and killed. And guess where more Falun Gong practitioners have been sent to labor camps than any other province in China? Yep, Liaoning. It's also home to the now infamous Ma Sanjia labor camp. Survivors have called it hell on earth, literally built on top of a graveyard. Now, aiding him in all this was his right-hand man Wang Li Jun, who would become Bo's police chief in Chongqing and whose political rise and fall would be so closely entwined with his. Wang was the head of Jinzhou City's Public Security Bureau and directed the organization in organ transplant research. A police chief doing research on organ transplants? Aren't those two unrelated? Well, not in China. Wang even won an award in 2006 for pioneering a form of lethal injection that would allow organs to be harvested from still living prisoners, technically the best time to harvest organs. During the award ceremony, he even boasted he personally oversaw several thousand intensive on-site cases of organ transplants. That's a lot of organs for a city-level medical research center to get their hands on, especially since China doesn't have a functioning organ donation system. So here's what we have so far. Bo Xilai greatly expands the labor camp system and, with full support and knowledge of senior Communist Party leaders, fills them with Falun Gong practitioners. Meanwhile, Wang Li Jun needs a lot of bodies to carry out his organ transplant research. Since many of these practitioners refuse to give identification for fear of endangering family and friends, could this large, unnamed body of Falun Gong practitioners that are being tortured and killed become a potential source? Well, according to independent researchers, yes. And they estimate that between 45 to 65,000 Falun Gong practitioners have been murdered specifically so that organs can be taken from them. These crimes happen inside military hospitals and so are officially sanctioned. Now, the thing is, not everyone in the Communist Party thought it would be the wisest thing to launch a very brutal and very expensive persecution against 100 million Chinese people. And that split the party between Jiang Zemin's camp, which included Bo Xilai, and guys like Jiang's successor, Hu Jintao, and former Chinese premier Wen Jiabao. Last year, Wang Lijun and Bo Xilai had a falling out, the details of which are still a bit unclear. In February 2012, Wang dressed himself like an old woman and fled to a U.S. consulate and tried to defect. Chinese police quickly surrounded the consulate and the U.S. gave up Wang after he told them, well, the U.S. State Department still has not released the Wang Lijun tapes, as they're called, so no one is really sure what he talked about. Then Bo Xilai was mysteriously fired, strange troop movements were reported in the night in Beijing, and rumors of a failed coup spread. For one night, the word Wang Lijun live harvest and other organ harvesting and Falun Gong related terms were suddenly uncensored on the Chinese internet. And then the announcement came that China would be ending organ harvesting of executed prisoners in three to five years. 
Guo hasn't been seen or heard from since he was placed under internal investigation in March 2012. Now, obviously, state-run Chinese media won't report on organ harvesting because that's something the Communist Party has a pretty vested interest in covering up. So the solution? Take Guo out with a run-of-the-mill corruption charge. That way, the public thinks the government is doing a great thing by taking down bad officials, and no one ever has to know about all the horrible killing and taking organs from political prisoners that's been happening for the past 14 years. So, in the coming weeks, as you hear news about Bo Xilai's trial, the mass amounts he's been accused of embezzling, and the possible suspended life sentence he may get, remember, the whole thing will be nothing more than a show trial, while the truly heinous crimes remain hidden behind glorified reports of another corrupt leader being taken down by the almighty party. So what do you guys think about the upcoming Bo Xilai trial? And perhaps more importantly, don't you think it's about time the U.S. State Department released those Wang Lijun tapes? If Wang did divulge details about the organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners by the Chinese government to the U.S. consulate, I personally would kind of like to know. Leave me your comments below and check out China Uncensored's Facebook and Twitter page for more. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.